So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how if you wanna get free internet from one location to another, I'm gonna be showing you how you can do that with these bridging units right here. Now I live over there, which is about a 150 meter span and my ex and my son live here. Now, before I did this, they were using mobile data plans and they were just simply running out of data where I think they had like 20 gigabytes and my ex was paying like $70 a month for 60 gig download. And I just said to him, well, on my plan, I get one gig down, one gig up and unlimited downloads for literally like $35 a month. So I'll just buy some units that'll bridge the internet connection and beam that over to you. And they liked the idea of that. And initially what I did was I went on Amazon and I bought this unit for $50. And I was like, wow, this looks really good. It had a five-star review at the time. And it said in the description, it could beam over 1000 meters. It could give you a signal. Then when I bought the unit and tried it out, it was total trash. It just didn't beam over a signal literally at all. And this was a 150 meter span. So I returned that straight away. I left a one star review <laughs> and not surprisingly, someone else also left a one star review in that time. So that product didn't pan out. Then after that, I've just thought, well, what's AliExpress got? Because I saw a lot of uh, sellers in Japan on Amazon were actually selling a lot of Chinese brands. So I thought, well, why not just buy from the source directly? And so I saw this brand constantly coming up on AliExpress called Comcast. And so looking at some previous reviews, I saw that people were getting very good results with these units, but they were mainly focused on remote security where I wanted to beam over free internet. And so I had to go through a hurdle of sort of understanding how to get this to work. And so in today's video, I wanna show you guys how you can get it to work reliably and easy, which is the crazy thing about this unit too, is I actually only have it on 12.5% transmission strength and it's giving out a really solid signal, really good internet. But let's show you guys how you can do this right after this sponsor spot. Today's video is brought to you by SCD Keys, where if you wanna get Windows 10 activated for as little as $14 with a legit single end user license, then you can use the link in the description below and use the coupon code BFTYC on checkout to get these keys for as little as $14. You can also use the Windows 10 for Windows 11 as well. But if you wanna get a Windows 11 dedicated license, they've got that as well. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And today we're talking about the Comfast CFE313AC. Now I bought two of these with the intention of extending my internet to another house. And of course, instead of having to pay uh, two separate internet connections every month, I can use that same internet connection, essentially save money every month. And this option here is very reliable. I'm gonna say I've been using this now for a little under a month, but it hasn't dropped out once. It works fine in the rain. And the transition power used for that over about 150 odd meters is 12 and a half percent. So I believe the extension of five kilometers that they say in their original listing is actually true, even though when you go into the settings on these Comfast units, it goes up all the way to 10 kilometers. So what we're looking at today though, is if you buy one of these, you can just have it as an outdoors access point. It has a huge range, but of course, the device that you're connecting that to also has to have a huge range as well. Hence why I've bought two of these where you have them both uh, transmitting to each other directly and they essentially work in what's known as bridge mode. And so to set this up, what you wanna do and I'll take you guys through all the settings that I did to get through this, because it is a little bit of a headache, especially when, if you're not a networking guru, uh, like me, I'm not really, networking isn't my strong uh, point. So I had to uh, get these both these units, plug them into my router, which is also then connected to my modem. So my modem feeds my router the internet, and then the router has all the LAN ports on it, and that connects to my devices. It also sends out its own wireless internet. And that's gonna be my main router for not just my studio here where my internet originally was, but that will also act through the bridge to the other house where that'll route the devices over there too. So it's important to set this up right so you don't have any problems, you don't have any errors. And so what you need to do is, uh, as soon as you get these units, plug them up to your router directly with the LAN ports. Now they do include uh, PoE or power over ethernet adapters, which is very handy because 
they essentially run their power through those uh, RJ45 LAN cables and plug them up, turn them on, and then from here you can access them through a computer that's connected again to your router via the web page, typing in 192.168.10.1. However, I had a problem here, and that is my router originally had that IP address as well. So I had to go into my router's settings and change the dot one to dot two to then be able to access the Comfast units one by one. And so after I did this, I then realized, okay, this is working now. But also you'll notice in your router settings, do take note of these settings because it's important. My router decides to route new devices from 100 to 200, meaning I can have 100 devices off my current router and it'll assign them an IP address in that local network. And so it's important to know this because after we uh, set up these Comfast units, at least in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be using these IP addresses different to what's out of the box. And so I do recommend doing this to whatever your router is setting them and also setting them within the same uh, IP address of the first three uh, locations. And that is 192.168.10. So what we'll do is we'll set up the first one, which is going to be sending the signal. And to do this, you essentially open up after you've changed your router's address to make sure it's different to 192.168.10.1. It might be something else, but you wanna make it within that 192.168.10, if that makes any sense. And then for me, you can just copy my settings if you wish to, make it dot two. And after we've done this, the Comfast unit will then show up on your local area network as 192.168.10.1. And you enter that in on a web browser, it'll bring up the page to log in. The default password is just admin. And also in the top right hand corner, you'll click on the globe icon. You can then change it from Chinese to English. So going through the settings here, it's actually very easy and it's a great simple UI to use. So what you wanna do here is go to the setup wizard and put it into uh, bridge mode. And the first device that's gonna be sending the signal, you wanna have this in access point mode. So that's just click on the left-hand side. And then you wanna go through the settings and set this up and name it whatever you wanna name it. For me, I just pretty much use the default name. And also I set up the unique channel and bandwidth that no one else is using around me. So since I'm in a populated area and there's a lot of different Wi-Fi devices around here, I wanna make sure I'm not using the same channel so there's no interruptions or there's no slowdowns of speeds. And so if you wanna check what other devices are in your vicinity, you can actually do this via the other setting just by even, you don't have to set and finish anything up just yet. You can actually check by doing the other option that's going to bridge mode and doing the client side and then scanning the network and seeing what other devices will come up. And it'll actually show you what channels every other device is using. So you can see in my local area here, a lot of people are using channel 36, 40, and pretty much up to 100. Those are the most popular channels. So I'm using 157, no one else is using that channel. Now for the bandwidth, these have the option to go up to 80 megahertz. I do suggest that because a lot of the cheaper devices in your area will use 20 and 40. So that's just for scanning the devices. Let's get back to setting up our first access point, the sending device. And so what we wanna do here is I'm actually gonna change, as we said before, the IP address of our sending unit to 192.168.10.110. So this is gonna be the first of the routers. And now I'm gonna to go to my bandwidth settings and my channels, as we said before. And I'm using 12.5% transmission power because I don't wanna be using any more than I have to in the sense that even if I put this up to 100%, it's not gonna make a difference to the internet speeds. So after you've set everything up, if you're running longer distances, you can play around with these settings. It's very easy to change them afterwards, and I'll explain that a little bit later. And so now that's our sending side that's set up from the house here where the router is and the internet's gonna be beamed out to the other location. And now it's time to set up the second device, and this is where we connect it to our router again directly here at the same location where the sending device is because we don't wanna run into any problems. And if we do run into any problems, we can then later easily configure them without having to run back and forth between separate locations. And now we log into this device with the same IP address as we did before because we've changed the IP address of that initial sending unit. And this will be 192.168.10.1. 
And we get into the settings here, we change the language to English, we then log in with the admin password, and then we go to the wizard setting, and we go through the bridging options here, going to the station, and then setting it to client side, and then going to next, and after we go through that, we'll then be able to scan and look for the original unit that's the sending unit and look for that name. And it'll see, in this case, it's channel 157. And we can connect to that with the password that we set in the previous settings when we're setting up the access point. And in the distance here, this is self-explanatory, just change this to roughly the distance that these two bridges are going to be running. In this case, it's under 500 meters, so I've set mine to 500 meters or less. And then we go to finish, but there is one more very important thing to do here. And this is probably the most important thing that I was scratching my head over because it's setting up essentially the gateway setting. And this is where you go down to network and you'll see here it says the gateway IP address. And so this is important here to put in your original router's IP address. So that'll be the 192.168.10.2. And then we save that in, and if all's going well, we should now have the two units not just connected, but we should be able to then change this location to the receiving side, the, the client side that we set up just recently, and then plug in, say, a laptop via the LAN port to that other location, and that should be getting now internet just like any device here at this local location. And so that's pretty much the gist of it here and how you can set up these two units to give free internet to another location. But what I've done now, you're probably like, well, how can I get now more devices at that other location? Well, here's where you can either set up a switch at that other location, if you're running LAN devices over there with multiple devices to give out more internet, or you can uh, simply run a, uh, what I've done here is I've got a little Wi-Fi device from TP-Link, and that'll essentially run in bridge mode with the same gateway settings, 192.168, .10.2, and that'll have its own IP address, which is 192.168.10.109. So again, it's important to have the IP addresses of all the other devices outside the router that's giving out all the IP addresses within that 100 to 200 range for me personally, because that's what my router decided to assign the devices in that range. And so now what I can do is, even from this location here, I can access all other devices over at my ex's place and where my boy is, and that will give me just so much convenience, and they can also access files from my NAS here, and it's so easy to actually network with these devices. They're so powerful, and yet they're so affordable. For 100 bucks, you can now bridge internet to another location. And what I found here though, is even though in the settings it says that it's transmitting up to 866 megabits per second, I found it actually the local area network connected to it, I think it only gives out 100 megabits per second. So when I tested the speeds directly connected into the laptop, the best case scenario I got was 90 down, 90 up. So I do believe these units, even though they say they're extremely fast up to 900 megabits per second, they're only really 100 megabits per second. And so what I did at the other location is I got a cheap Wi-Fi 100 megabits per second solution and that is perfectly fine everything is running without a hiccup. Now, the final thing I'll say is the build quality is pretty good. I've had these outdoors. They haven't missed a beat, so their weatherproofing is kind of true. I mean, I haven't left them out in a thunderstorm and they haven't been copping mass amounts of dirt, but they have been getting wet and rain has been going on them and they've been running absolutely fine. The UI is really good, really clean, really easy to use. They've got heaps of additional settings there for advanced users as well things like firewall settings, as well as custom routing options. And you can also manually boot people off your network if you find that they're getting in via the users list. So that's another cool feature that these offer. Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions or comments about these units in today's video or setting up something similar, do drop a comment down below. Have you done something similar as well? Love reading those thoughts and opinions. As always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Dan, and they ask, how long are you staying in Japan? And at this point in time, I actually don't really know. I did extend my visa for another 90 days, so that went through. Um, so I'm staying for pretty much another four months. Uh, so really just enjoying my time though, in terms of spending time with my son, 
uh, it's just a lot of fun, especially with what happened in the previous years with COVID. It's just been an absolute uh, precious break that I've appreciated. And yeah, I mean, going forward, I'm just going to keep doing what I do, I guess, make content when I can, but also really enjoy the time with my son. But to answer the question, simply another four months at least. After that, I don't know. Maybe I'll try some other options to stay here because I'm really loving life. But yeah, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you want to see the videos as soon as they drop, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.